adding privacy policy and terms and condition can sometimes be quite a barrier. In this video we're going to learn how we can create this. So this is actually an app I have in progress, you can find out more down in the description. But what we are going to learn is this part down at the bottom. If we would press privacy policy, we can see that we get this pop-up which loads in the privacy policy and also the terms and conditions. So what this actually does is that it loads a markdown file down into the widget and that will then be displayed. The official sponsor of this video is Shannon Galway, which is supporting me on Patreon. You can find out more about Patreon down in the description and let's get started. So looking at the code, we can see that I have made a very simple project. We have the main file, which opens this sign in page. And this sign in page is very, very simple. So running this project and we're going to just see how it looks. Here we have the application. So this application is pretty similar to one that I created. We can see that we have these terms of, terms of service and privacy policy. And if we press this, nothing actually happens. So this text at the bottom is actually this terms of use widget, which you can find the, at the bottom of this sign in page. So if we take a look at this, this is simply just a padding wrapping a rich text. So we can see that this rich text is by creating an account, you're agreeing to our, and then we do a backslash n to just break it to a new line. Terms of service, which we can also call terms and conditions. And then we have another text band, which is just an and, and then privacy policy. So what we're going to do first is actually just make these buttons clickable. So to make this clickable, we are going to have to do one special thing. So what we could do usually is just wrap something in a inkwell or a gesture detector, but we can't really do that as this children's is actually expected to be a text span. But what this actually gives us though is a recognizer and we can create our tap gesture recognizer. So if we do that and we use this cascade and we call on tap. So on this on tap, we want to assign it to an anonymous function. And here we actually get pretty much what we can do with a simple on tap on a inkwell. So doing this, what we're supposed to do here is open dialog of terms of condition, conditions. And we're pretty much going to do the same thing in this one, except instead of terms and condition, we're going to do privacy policy. So what we're going to do first is actually we're going to create our two uh, files. So this is a very handy site that I've used for my apps. And of course you have to look over so it becomes correct for you. But what we simply do is fill out these forms. So for example, app name, terms of service app, contact information, Robert, or let's just say gmail.com. And what will we store? We're not going to store anything special right now. Let's say it's a free app and it's both Android iOS and we are an individual. And then we go to the next step and we can select some different things. So for example, we can select Google Analytics. Let's just add that for the sake of it. We go to the next one and we can see that we have two buttons right here. So we have the privacy policy and terms of conditions. So what we're simply going to do is take this privacy policy, press on markdown. And we can see that we have all of this text right here. So we're going to copy all of this, go back into the application, go to the top of the folder structure, create a new folder called assets. Inside here we can, uh, I will just put these files directly in the assets actually. So for example, privacy policy.md and MD is just a extension for markdown and we can just pretty much paste all of this in. So now we have a very nice file that we can edit in and it's very easy to do. Let's add another one, terms and conditions. 
go back to the site, take the terms of conditions, take markdown, copy everything, and just paste it in in the terms and conditions. So that's all we have to do for the two files. Now for the on tap, we actually just have to open the dialog somehow. So I have created a folder called dialogs, which I have not created yet. So we're actually just going to create a new dialog. So let's call this policy dialog. And let's make it a stateless widget and call it something like policy pop-up dialog is probably the correct one. And we import. So now we're going to need or require some things. So let's actually make this a bit more styled. So let's create two variables, one for radius and one for the file name. And we create a constructor for these two. And we're going to do two things here actually. We're going to set the radius to eight. So this will just have this so that the dialog is actually a bit rounded. You can ignore that if you want to. And this MD file name, we're going to make a required. We're also going to do one thing before we continue with that and that's create another assert or create a assert. And we're going to assert if the uh, file name does not contain a .md. So md file name dot contains dot md, and of course we're going to remove the const, and we can give some nice message like the file must contain the dot md extension, like that. And now we can just create our widget. So we're going to do a dialog. In this dialog, we're going to have a shape and we're going to set that to rounded rectangle border with a border radius dot circular. And that's going to be our radius. I'm just going to keep all of this on one line so it's easier to see. What we're going to do then is have a child. This child is going to have a column. So what we actually want to do now is we can create any kind of dialogue we want to. I'm just going to create the one that we had in the example. So what we're going to do is we're going to have the text at the top and then at the bottom we're going to have a button. So we're going to create a column and the first child is a expanded or expanded. And that's simply to have all of the text inside this expanded. And then we're going to have our button at the bottom. So for the button, we can actually just create a flat button. And for the flat button, we're actually going to have some, uh, some things. So I'm just going to paste this in. So we're going to have some padding. We're also going to have a color. I'm going to just set that as the primary color of the application. For the unpressed, we're just going to have navigator.off.pop. And that's just to close the, uh, the dialog when we press OK. We're going to set a shape for this. And we're just going to have the radius for that one. And that will be set to bottom left and bottom right. So we can have that follow the dialog. And we're going to create a child with a container. This container is going to have some decorations just to make this container rounded as well. And for the alignments here, we can set that to the center. We're going to have a height of 50 and a width of as much space as we can. Now for the text, we're going to just put some text here. Let's say OK or close. And that's all for the button. So for the expanded, now actually comes the more interesting part. So what we're going to do is that we're going to go to the PubSpec YAML first. 
I'm going to add a, another dependency. I'm going to take a markdown. We can have these, let's see, there, flutter markdown. So let's add that. And inside this expanded, we're actually going to use a future builder. So the reason we're using a future builder is because we have to actually load in the actual text from the file. So let's create a future builder. And inside here we have a builder and a future. So let's just add that. Builder. Now for the builder, so let's wait with the future for now. So what we're actually going to return is that we're going to return a markdown. And that's the actual widget for the markdown. And then we're going to import the markdown. So now inside this, we have some things that we can display. So for example, we're going to display some data and that data is actually going to come from the builder. So if we just wrap this in a if, so snapshot dot has data, then we're going to display our markdown widget. And then if we do not have data, we're simply going to return a circular progress bar. Like that. So for the uh, for the actual text of the markdown, that will be the snapshot data. And then we can add some stylings to this. I'm just going to ignore that for now. So this actual snapshot is actually going to be when we actually have parsed or got the whole file into a stream. So the problem with this is that this widget, uh, the markdown widget, is not completely optimized, so it will lag the animations. So we actually have to wait until the animation is complete. So if we do a future.delayed, and we're going to set the duration and we're going to set the duration to 150 milliseconds. After that, we can then do what we want to do. So if we write return, we can write root bundle and we're going to load a string and then we're going to say where we're going to load that string from. Well, that's going to be assets dash and our MD file name. So if you save this now, this won't actually work because we haven't included that in the YAML file. So if we scroll down, we can see that here is how you would add some assets. So let's remove some comments. And instead of images, we're going to use write assets. We would have to restart the application. So right now we have actually created the dialog, but we're actually not showing it and we don't give it any kind of file. So now if we go to the terms of use, we're going to display the dialog. So let's just do a show dialog. The context is going to be the context. And then for the child, we're going to have a, or for the builder, we're going to have the actual policy dialog. So the file we're going to load in on privacy policy is the one that we named up at the top at assets. So that will be privacy policy.md. And that's of course going to be in the MD file name. So here we have the dialog. So let's see if this works as of now. And just a heads up, don't forget to add the slash after assets. That way we load in everything in the assets folder. So looking at the application, we actually get a error. So looking at the code again, we can see that we just misspelled assets. So let's just redo that. So now looking at the application, we can just click the privacy policy and we should see that this is loaded up and we have this nice pop-up. So of course you can set the, the, for example, height if you don't want this to cover everything. 
but that's just an example. So now going back to the code, we can very simply just add another dialog for the terms and condition. So going to the on tap here, we can just paste the same, we just write terms and conditions. Just add some formatting here. So one thing we could also do is that we could go to the YAML file and add another dependency, for example, animations. And with animations, instead of show dialog, we can do show model. And that's, that needs a configuration. Fade. And we can use the fade scale transition and configuration. Let's do that for the other one, or actually we can have them side by side so you can see the example. So now if we restart the application, go back to the application, we can see that if we would press terms and condition, we can see that we have the application. And if we see if we click on the privacy policy, that's also popping up. And we have this smooth animation. So for example, privacy policy is using a normal dialog while terms and condition is using the animated dialog from the animations package. I hope you liked this video. Please let me know by liking and subscribing to the channel. Also checking out Patreon down in the description. You can also find the application that I'm making complete in Flutter, which is also a website in the description as well. Make sure to sign up to the newsletter and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you.